Welcome everyone to another edition of Ask Octopus, where we take your interesting questions from the community and do our best to answer them for today. Got a full crew today. I have not just myself and Ryan, but we also have James and Sean. Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hello. So I got, I got a good one that came through this week, and it actually was asked of me uh, three times in less than 24 hours. So it's like, that's probably a good Ask Octopus video then. That is it definitely is. a sign. <laughs> it's definitely a sign. They're all do, they were all doing the same thing. And so the question is, how can I restart my VM or tentacle in the middle of a deployment? Um, all three of the customers, they wanted to do uh, configuration changes on their machine or they were trying to update uh, on like Windows Update or something like that. And they wanted to be able to restart the machine after that occurred. Well, if you have the tentacle restart the machine, it kills it basically kills the connection and it causes the deployment to fail. Do you guys get asked this a lot or do you have customers trying to do that? Uh, I've seen it come up a few times. It doesn't come up as much to, as questions to me, but I used to do this and I would just, I just knew cause I was using it for like an operations process, like mm -hmm. I do windows updates. So I would, uh, I would have a, a scheduled restart and then I would just knew that the technical would be unavailable for a few minutes after it finished at some point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we we were wondering about this at my old job. We never actually solved it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I I actually had to solve this for our um, infrastructure as code for our demo infrastructure because part of that demo infrastructure is not only do I install um, IIS and everything, but I'm also running uh, SQL Server Express as part of as part of the package itself. And when you install SQL Server Express, at least when I did it at that time, it it required a restart of the whole VM when that happened. So let me show you how I solved that by showing you how I solved it for my local machine, my local infrastructure, because I, I wanted to solve for the, the particular customers. How do I use leverage? Win sorry, excuse me. How do I leverage windows updates with uh, octopus deploy? Can octopus deploy handle something like that? I'm like, I, I, that's a good question. I wonder that, um, so I was like, let's, let's see if I can do something like that. Um, so what I have is I have my standard script to get the latest Windows updates. I'm using a, it's a PowerShell package. Um, I believe it's called PS Windows Update. So I had to do a little bit of prep work um, on each machine in my infrastructure to install that. Um, but then once I installed it, I can then go in and can just write this script and just run this particular script. So once you have that particular module installed, all you have to do is write this particular line of code and it will go ahead and it will run Windows Update and accept all. I told it to ignore the reboot because I don't want it to reboot after it installs everything. Um, I, I'm going to control that in just a little bit and then go ahead and install anything that it finds. So it'll go through and I'll rip through and I'll find all my Windows updates for me and, and automatically install them. But for the restart, what I decided to do instead of having the tentacle try to restart itself, because at least all those issues was set up a worker pool. So I call this my hypervisor worker pool. It has a machine in there right now, just my hub worker. And that has permissions to run a Hyper-V command. Um, I'm cheating a little bit because I just have this tentacle installed on my single lone hypervisor. I would probably have a whole worker pool set up with permissions to do something like this. But in a nutshell, what it's doing is it's just running a PowerShell script to say restart VM. Uh, you can also have it do restart computer. I don't have all my permissions set up correctly to do that. And I didn't really feel like doing that at that particular point in time. So I'm like, I'll just cheat, tell Hyper-V to restart itself and uh, restart that VM and call it good. Um, I am doing a rolling update as well. And so I'm doing it one target at a time. So the nice thing about this is if I, I, I could set this up and then say, okay, I want you to do this for, uh, like say a web farm and go ahead and deploy this out there and deploy your Windows updates out there and just do it one at a time as opposed to try to do everything all at once. So what it looks like when it's all said and done, oops, clicked on the wrong thing, is create a release, go ahead and save it. It doesn't take very long to run. I'm going to use Ryan's favorite feature, write highlight, to output out the computer name so I know what's going on. I, the other day, I ran one of my test projects for 
uh, the first time in a while. And it just had one of the steps in the middle was a script step that just wrote highlight. And it was like, I think it was, yeah, in all caps. <laughs> like, oh, that sounds like something I would do. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's just go in through it. Um, we can look at the task log. It, if it doesn't find any updates, I think it doesn't report. Oh, there it goes. Oh, good. So we get to watch all this stuff. That would be fun. Wow, it downloaded that pretty fast. Wow, it's downloaded 300 megs only a second. Gotta love my gigabit Ethernet connection. I was gonna say you're lucky. Well, well, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not offered price, where I'm at. Price for life too. Just don't. I just want don't want to change anything. That's interesting. It's slightly different. Anyway, but then what I did to kind of complete this whole concept of uh, having this process be kind of a maintenance for maintenance project for me is in my trigger. I set up a monthly update. And this is something I didn't notice before. You can specify a day of a week and the number of days. So I think patch Tuesday, I think it's patch Tuesday is the second Tuesday of the month. So I said, why don't you just do the third Thursday of every month? And I'll go through and I'll just run this every every third Thursday of the month at 9 p.m. And just do that for me. But the root the root solution is don't restart your don't try to restart your tentacle from your tentacle back it away and restart your v have uh restart your vm using the hypervisor or if you're using say azure or aws there's a cli command to go ahead and restart the vm um and it will go ahead and restart it for you and it's, it's actually pretty quick when it's all said and done and then the other nice thing is that if something does something doesn't go right so let's say this restart vm is taking a while or whatever the case may be i at least have control over it it doesn't go <clears throat> doesn't go off into the ether since this is running on a separate machine, I can have a little bit more control over my script itself and I can come in and I can say, okay, if it doesn't come back online after you know, 20 seconds or something like that, then fail the deployment and notify somebody because something, something bad has happened. Go plug the, the machine under your desk back in. <laughs> <laughs> well, my hypervisor is just sitting over there, so I would just, I just walk over to her and go, nope. <laughs> but... This is just, yeah, I'd say probably in the real world, you probably have to go through a lot of security layers. But, uh, but yeah, overall, I mean, the, same, the, the, the core concept is going to apply pretty much anywhere um, just to have a machine set up in a, in a worker pool to kind of handle all that work for you. You might have to configure um, the tentacle to run as a specific account when you do this because that account will need access to be able to restart uh, virtual machines depending on your hypervisor or whatever the case may be. Um, so it will be unique per situation, but the core concept should still apply for everything. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me today. Uh, we have a new email address. Uh, so if you want to email us at advice at octopus.com with your question, uh, we'll be more than happy to answer your question. Uh, if it, it is a support question, we do ask you to email support at octopus.com. Uh, that gets tracked a different way, and it has a, an SLA associated with that. Um, but if you do have any questions, go ahead and submit it to us at hello.octopus.com slash askoctopus, and we are on Slack. Uh, go ahead and join us, octopus.com slash Slack. Uh, we're there. Uh, jump in and out throughout the day and try to answer the questions we can. Thank you, Sean, James, Ryan, for joining me today. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. You guys have a great day. You too.